Maria is asking on YouTube Live, I haven't been able to find much info about ray marching or raycast on documentation. Can you give me a basic example of hitting a target, fear hitting a plane, and getting the info to do something? Yeah. So we also went, we also did uh, some raycast examples last week. So we might also point to that. But let me open up, should I open a fresh project or just? Maybe I can just I think so. turn this stuff off. Um, so yeah, let's just call this cube our spear, and we'll call this plane our target. This cube. So yeah, while I'm doing this, I'll explain. Um, so ray casting and ray marching are pretty different. Ray marching usually um, is so almost kind of like a ray cast that's happening inside of a shader for determining like lighting and rendering uh like what colors things will be with different light multiple lights applied and stuff like that something like that but um ray casting is kind of a more general uh, it's like the idea of uh checking from one point to another point if something is in between them or if something is in that direction um so the ray casting is what we can kind of do in game development Whereas ray marching might be more of what we could do if we're like designing complex 3D shaders that are like really high fidelity. Think of like AAA games with like shiny suits of armor. <laughs> yeah, here's our raycast node, much simpler. So raycast, you basically are defining the origin of the ray. Um, so that would be wherever our spear is and then the direction, whichever direction our spear is facing. And then the length is how far we want to test with that. And then once we have this, once we have these three points defined, it should check against any other 3D collider. And then when it hits, um, we'll have this ray hit uh, Boolean say true. And then we can have this uh, hit info array. And this is because you could have like, uh, like three planes in a row or three objects overlapping each other, and this raycast goes through all of them. You might have an array of multiple objects that were hit. So that's why you have this hit info array. Uh, but we'll probably only care about the first one in the array. So get item from array. Here's the hit info array. And then we'll just say index zero just for this example. But you know, if, if you care a lot and you're doing a lot of complex games, you might have a game where you're going through the whole array which becomes a little more complex because you have to use a for loop to go through all of them. But we're, yeah, we're just going to check this one. Um, okay, so we can see up here in this window, the uh, we can switch between local and world, and it doesn't change right now because the objects are aligned. But the arrows here, you might, you probably understand this for the most part, but this is the Y direction of the cube, the Z direction, and the X direction. So that makes it easier for us to determine the direction that we want of this raycast um, by using the uh, world transform info. So this will give us our up, right, and forward. These are those three arrows that you see right there. So for our spear, we can select it here, and suddenly we, we know what those arrows are, and those will be our direction uh, based on how we want this spear to look. So let's see, let's say that it goes in, in, in the Y. A lot of programs will say the Z direction is the forward, but as you can see, we can just define it however we want. So we'll just make this look more speary. And then that arrow upward, that's gonna be what we're checking. So I think the origin will be the world position. And then let, let's just add it to the tip, right? So that up, I think this is gonna be up, the green one. So we're going to add, uh, you know, maybe this is too much for a simple example. But basically, I'm just saying uh, the up direction, we want to just multiply it by a half. Is that right? How tall are these cubes? I can't remember. Is it four units? We'll just say we'll cut it in half since it's half of a cube. And then we can fine tune that in a bit. Um, so then <clears throat> we have the up direction plus that center value. So then that shifts our... This is the tip of our arrow. That's our origin, because that's that makes a little more sense in the, the physical concept of it. And then our up direction is that green arrow. So 
that up direction is also the direction that we're checking with our Raycast. Um, so it's very helpful to mention, just look in the scene view and get an idea of these and remember to match them up to your world transform info. And that helps you kind of think about it a lot more easily with these nodes. Raycast type all, um, <clears throat> to be honest, I don't know exactly how much this affects it, the all or near, if it should uh, stop at the nearest object it hits. Okay. So this will make sure that it only hits one object and then it stops raycasting. So unless you really need to it to keep raycasting through all the objects and you're using the for loop, switch this to near because otherwise you don't need it. If you're just checking the first one it hits, then just test the first one it hits. And that'll save your pro your that'll make it more optimized, more likely to pass uh, the test performance and everything. So the length, we can just Set that to 9999 since we're only doing near. Um, if you had like a hundred objects and you were doing rate type all, then you would maybe make this shorter. For instance, if you're in like some kind of space shooter game and it's doing a short shotgun blast, this is where you could change the length to whatever that blast is. But for this, we're just checking um, is this, is it in, is there something in front of the spear? And then we can do another check as well. So you might actually make this really short if you're just testing for the spear tip as well. So probably you want to do this every frame. Uh, be careful with this raycasting every single frame. If you do it with like a bunch of objects on a bunch of other objects, you might have some troubles with the performance. And um, we'll add component 3D physics box collider. I don't think we need, do we need rigid bodies? I don't think so. So I'll just test it with these box colliders. And then one thing to do while you're just setting up, always use peak nodes just to test your test it before you dive too deep in with the logic. So we can just see, is, is it hitting anything? And currently it's not. Um, so then if we come out here, so the spear is lined up with this plane, we should be able to see it, this uh, data ray hit boolean turn to true once this spear faces it, right? So if we rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, it should, there we go. And we can switch this to local view if we wanna see the arrows move with the objects, which is great, like I said, for ray casting. Okay, so it's pointing here. So now we say, okay, this hit is happening when the spear is pretty far away. So what do we want, what do we do? to make it only hit when the, when it's actually there, actually right in front of it. What if we set this length to one? Now you can see it's the Boolean value is not there. So as we dr drag it closer, we'll see closer, closer, closer. Um, once it gets within one, maybe. So that's uh, it's pretty close. So then I would say, I would say instead of this, we want to multiply this by four. So that the units are four, and that might be close. That might be a better rec representation. Now we can see it's a little closer to the tip. Okay, so it's about right here. So it's about halfway. So I think if we multiply this by four, actually, it'll be basically right on the tip. And sometimes you have to do these experiments to figure out like the actual size. Oh yeah, you can see box collider eight. So the width of the cube is eight. So that means this length from the center to the edge is gonna be four. So this should line up pretty nicely to where when the tip gets within one unit of the top, now the uh, hit happens. And then lastly, let's see, what are the other physics nodes? Hit info, hit, ray hit info. This is a way to get the details out of that that info from this array. So once you grab the zero index ray hit info from this array, you can plug in this ray hit info node to get the all the data out of it. So you can check which scene object it was. You can check um, the the di distance, rigid body. You can get all these things. So for instance, if this was an exploding arrow and the, the target that you hit, uh, you could maybe grab this rigid body and apply some force to it. And so that wall would like blow out of the way. Something like that. You could grab the rigid body, you could grab the scene object, the other scene object, collider, turn it off if you don't want anything else to hit it anymore. 
all these things are very accessible. And then the hit normal might be uh, very valuable if you want the object to bounce off of that. So, so the hit normal is going to be the direction that it was facing against the wall of that collider. So that makes it, you just, you can just like kind of use that to make it bounce back in the same direction or bounce in a real physics realistic kind of way. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is kind of an overall, how I would use a Raycast, these Raycast nodes, I think a ton of different things you can do with them. So some of these things that I'm showing you are like how you would do this scenario, but maybe there are some other totally different ideas that you could use the same exact nodes for. They're very flexible. I hope that covers the, the Raycast questions of kind of how to use it. I think it was very informative. Ronnie is has a right hand emoji and is saying literally taking notes and people are saying I never knew the arrows meant anything thought they were just for moving stuff and sizing so I think you've done an excellent job in explaining Ruya also says thank you so much with a party emoji so thank you August. <laughs> We have another question from MA3 Designer. They're asking, when we link a 3D model to the face info point, how can we adjust its Z depth? It seems to maintain the same size, whether the person is close to or far from the camera. You know what? Maybe I could bring up a personal project where I made some subgraphs for this. A personal project? Oh my gosh, we love seeing it. Uh, yeah. So if anybody wants to see this configuration and take a screenshot, now's the time. And then I'll- Can you close. save it and we can share it to Discord? Sure. Thank you.